It's time for Random Travels. Today's journey takes us to the West Virginia State Museum in Charleston. Yep, doop, 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 doop. Come on in, everybody. I've been waiting for you. Here we see a buckskin jacket worn by Cornelius S. Maston. I can tell you that he was from New York and that he was in the Civil War. That's about it. Now take a moment to examine these artifacts. There will be a test at the end of the video. <laughs> <laughs> hey, looky here. Who knew that Billy the Kid's chaps would wind up in this place? These chappies are nearly 140 years old. And you can come to see them under glass. Are you looking for trouble? i the chaps of Billy the Kid. Over here. Somebody get me out of this place. I'm a real horse. Gosh, I'd like to help you, Mr. Horsey, but I got no superpowers and I got no big brain. That's right. Go ahead and poop in my oat bag. I'm really sorry, Mr. Horsey. Oh, Mr. Horsey. The viewers are gonna have to excuse me while I pull myself together. Amuse yourself by looking at the artifacts. Come on, pull yourself together. Okay, I'll try. <sighs> You may have noticed the reference to the Battle of Point Pleasant. That was the fight against Chief Cornstalk. You can learn more about it if you go and watch my video about the Mothman Festival. And if you've already seen it, watch it again! Did you know that Daniel Boone lived in Charleston? Well, in about 1788, at the age of 54, Boone moved to Point Pleasant. He and his family soon relocated to Charleston on the south side of the Canal River opposite the mouth of Campbell Street. During his time in the region, he represented Canal County in the Virginia General Assembly, served as a lieutenant colonel in the local militia, surveyed vast land tracts in the region, and was an avid hunter. This here is the Vance family cabin. This cabin was probably built in the 1870s. It was built as a home, but it later became a schoolhouse. And after a new school was built, this cabin wasn't needed anymore. So these people named McCoy bought it, they moved it. And then in 2008, it got donated to the State Museum. So it got taken apart piece by piece, brought here, put back together again. Behold the glory and the splendor of the cabin. Its magnificence and grace so rare to behold. And we are truly blessed to be here today to witness its glory with our own eyes. I only hope that there's no ghosties and monsters in here. No spirits of dead cows, or chickens, or other things that might frighten my fragile psyche. Or something that will jump out of me and go, Booga booga, booga booga booga. Ooh, here's some stuff about John Brown. John Brown was an abolitionist. After killing slavery supporters in Kansas, he made his way to Harper's Ferry, Virginia, with the hopes of sparking a slave uprising that would lead to the end of slavery. On October 18, 1859, Brown and 22 men commandeered an armory building. He intended to distribute weapons to the slaves in the area, but they did not revolt. When militia soldiers showed up, Brown and his men were in a pickle. In the end, John Brown was convicted of treason and hanged on December 2nd, 1859. For some reason, this portrait reminds me of Johnny Cash. You should try and fall. Cows won't milk. Chickens won't lay. I come in to see what I can learn about this John Brown. It's open now, Father. And carried him up from the edge of the house. I've seen him myself. He's still bleeding. And his hair mad with gold. The Hatfield and McCoy feud. The exact cause of the feud is unknown. Maybe a stolen pig. Perhaps the romance of John Hatfield and Roseanne McCoy. Maybe the dispute even went back to the Civil War. Personally, I think it was pilfered underwear. Regardless, the feud was official in 1882 when three McCoy brothers killed Ellison Hatfield. The next day, the victim's brother Anderson, called Devil Ants, formed a posse that killed the three McCoys. Over the next few years, more people were killed and some went to jail. In 1890, the only person legally executed wasn't named Hatfield or McCoy. His name was Mounts.
Let's take a walk through a coal mine. Do de do de do. Walk in the coal mine, walk in the coal mine, on the tracks. And as we do, we'll come to this little coal town. All right, here is the company store. This is what I wanted to show you. Look at all the stuff, all the old-timey stuff. We got bottles and boxes and cans and look at the dresses and the bags and look at those old-timey shoes. And the shelves are just stocked full of stuff for all the coal miners to buy. And you can even get a candy bar for a penny. There's just all kinds of stuff in there. Here's those shoes again. There's some with... Wow, they're really pointy. But look at this old jalopy. That is so neat. Rocking chair on a porch. Hey, look at the shelf inside there. Look at all the CDs on the wall. That's a lot of CDs. Uh, these are... Wait a minute. Uh, telephone operators. This is a telephone thing? I'm not sure what all this stuff is. But there's lots of it. Here's some uniforms. Ah, look at the old-timey camera. Say cheese, whiz. Hey, look at this guy, John Henry. He's a big old guy with a big old hammer who I guess he hit big old rocks. There's a railroad strike in 1877. I guess they didn't get a whole lot of work done then. Wow, that's the biggest steering wheel I've ever seen. I want to put that in my car. Hmm, I don't know what this is. But it's got gears. Pottery, pottery. I don't make much pottery. How about some glass? How about some big old scissors? I bet these are things that people have never seen before. Okay, here's some old-timey looking bottles. Look at the old Pepsi and something and Cherry River and a cowboy and cans of Sniffity Snuff. A miniature baseball bat. Can you imagine the size of the tiny person who used that bat? Ding dong! Wheeling versus Charleston. I think that has to do with the capital. The capital burns! Do 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 We'll get to something interesting eventually. I think that's a picture of one of the old Capitol buildings. Next is some shovels. Lincoln walks at midnight. Yes, there is a great big sculpture of this outside on the lawn, which you can take a look at later. Okay, here's some history of the old Capitals. First Capitol. In Wheeling, second capital, in Charleston. Third capital, back to Wheeling. Fourth capital, back to Charleston. Fifth capital, still in Charleston, but it was a cheapie. Then in 1932, the current day capital in Charleston. Here's a piano behind glass. And some old musical instruments with a radio, but you didn't know that. Old time baseball uniforms next to some football uniforms. Moonshine still. Well, West Virginia, what do you expect? You gotta have a still. McCrory's. Here's how Charleston used to look back in the olden days. Charleston is still full of mm, brick, brick streets, just like they used to have. We still have those around. 
just not as much. But here's some really nice glass. Is that like Tiffany or something? But it's pretty neat and old timey looking. Take a sneak around the corner, take a peek, what is there? It's a mail pouch, tobacco sign, mail pouch, tobacco sign. No, no, look at the snake. The snake is alive and it's, it's very dangerous. And there's a cardinal up there on that telephone pole. Is he eavesdropping on the phone calls? Here's some WVU and Marshall Jersey. Mr. NBA picture guy. Yeah, he's like the logo. Ah, here's some neat stained glass. Do, 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 do. Chirpy, 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 birdie. Chew that milk pouch tobacco. Treat yourself to some mouth cancer. Hello, you chubby raccoon. Hey. Haven't I seen you outside, you little zombie thing? You seem to show up in a lot of places I go. Stop following me! Huh, huh, mm. rejection. I see balloons. What's going on here? Oh, it's the 150th anniversary of West Virginia statehood. And this was the thing that they did on the Capitol building. The video mapping, it was pretty neat. Here comes President Lincoln, the guy who created the state. Hello, Lincoln. Hello, hello, Abe. Where are you going? Boom! Crash, tinkle, it all falls down. And there's the state reveal, like a ghost. And somebody's beating his chest. Oh no, he's playing the violin. Well, he kind of looked like a gorilla up there. There's that Lincoln looking in his hat. He's looking for his magic rabbit. Now we're outdoors, outside of the museum. Let's go run around the complex out here and see what we can see. Is there anybody up there? Hello? Up in the tree. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Boy, look at those three heads. They're very ominous looking. I feel like they're all staring at me. Stop staring at me! Over here we see the governor's mansion. Of course, our governor's mansion is empty because our governor doesn't live here. He owns the Greenbrier Resort. And he'd probably rather be closer to the resort. It's a whole lot little bit nicer than the governor's mansion. Here we see the Canal River um, and Canal Boulevard and a bunch of just trees. And now we see a Civil War soldier and one of the black squirrels that runs around here. So a whole bunch of these guys. They're not your typical gray squirrels. Bring in the wind. Now here's a great big statue of Lincoln, like the one that we saw inside, except it's so much bigger. It's called. Walking at midnight or a walk at midnight it has something to do with being outside walking around at midnight. I'm sure that the president had a lot on his mind back in the Civil War days. Walking at midnight maybe cooled his brain down. Well, that's it from the capital in Charleston. Thanks for tagging along, everybody. I think I'm gonna call it a day now because tonight I'm be turning into a werewolf and I got a date with a zombie lady.